Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, coinaholics? Oh, uh, I tell you what, today we are going to be handling uh, some dirty gold, some dirty treasures, and uh, today we're going to keep it real. All right, um, kind of a back to basics geared video in which we talk about some of the most unexpected coins that could come out of nickel rolls. And um, yeah, we're gonna talk about, you. Yeah, I have a whole list of various coins that I wanted to talk about that I think would be relevant for a lot of uh, new um, roll hunters, new pocket chain searchers, um, just really trying to identify uh, some of the coins that probably you haven't seen. Now, why am I even doing this video? Okay, it's real simple. I have uh, received a huge amount of uh, just overall comments through my channel, uh, emails, uh, regarding certain coins that me, uh, as someone who's been in the business for over 25 years, have seen quite frequently. Um, not tired of it, believe me, uh, this is a lot of fun. But being able to identify certain coins is going to be um, important. All right, for a number of reasons. If you are truly in love with the hobby and you want to get into it, uh, to you know, as kind of a way as a pastime, um, you know, some people like to use it because they're dealing with PTSD and various other ailments. Um, that is cool. Uh, this is probably one of the least stressful hobbies that you could ever think of. Plus, who doesn't like collecting money? You've heard me say that before. So, rolls come in many forms, okay? If you're the type of person that likes to go to the bank to pick up rolls of coin to see what's in there, okay? Uh, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on trying to find the next big hit, something that'll, you know, return $100, $500, $1,000, $2,000, $10,000, dollars whatever the case may be. Um, you know, there are a number of coins that generally would trip up a few people, especially the new folks. So we are gonna go ahead and put those right there. And um, you know, we're gonna shoot from the hip. Generally from this particular video, we are gonna place a pretty good emphasis on coins that you would see coming out of the 20th century and into the 21st century. So I have a number of coins right here. We're just gonna kind of go through, with it, through them to know exactly what we have here uh, based on condition, all right? Typically, you're not going to find the highest grade specimens of these coins out there in um, circulation. Case in point, if you found a coin that looks like this, oh, and by the way, again, this is going to be a video geared toward, you know, kind of like the back to basics training of some of these coins, um, you know, so if you're looking for something hot, new and fresh, that's really going to, uh, you know, I guess probably engage you a little bit more. This might not be the video for you. So I thought I would just kind of point that out there. But um, if you come across coins that look like this, what you have are Liberty Head Nickels. All right. So these were produced from 1883 to 1913. Okay. 1913 is kind of a special date in that the U.S. Mint only produced five pieces of that particular date, and they're worth millions of dollars. All five examples are socked up in some high-end kind of collection uh, of sorts. You know, investors, uh, you know, people that want them, bought them. Uh, they come up very infrequently in the auction scene, maybe once every five to ten years. Um, but, you know, the, that is the final date of this series. Now, if you received one coin that looks like this, Okay, so you have two different coins. You have a really worn down 1910 on the left side, and then you have this 1908 that has a dark patina. This will trip some people out right here um, because a lot of you have heard the term black beauty nickel. Or perhaps someone might say, oh, this one is probably an error because, you know, it's a different color or uh, it's got kind of like a beat up surface that, that might be something that left the mint um, errantly, okay? So the real difference is, is the 1910 is just a really worn down graded coin, okay? Which again, this is gonna be more of the typical type of grade that you're gonna see come out of change. All right, so let's make that clear. This one right here, the surfaces of this coin, even though you could see Liberty quite well right here on this 
crown, which is uh, kind of one of those pickup points in the grading scene. Generally, if you could see all the letters in Liberty, you have a coin that effectively grades out around VF30 and higher. Okay, you get into some of those lower grades, like the 1910 that I showed you, those coins are generally worth anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar. Now this one right here, this surface was created as a result of some sort of environmental um, uh, damage. All right, the coin was probably buried in the ground at some point. It was uh, pulled out of the ground. So maybe a metal detector is found it, or someone was digging through a, a yard to, you know, put down new sod or do a garden or whatever. And these things pop up like this. All right, so the green stuff that you have here is what they call vertigris. It's a type of um, uh, this is a type of corrosion right here that is typically seen on coins and um, it's irreversible, okay? That is long lasting damage that you will see on these coins. Um, let me go ahead and talk about some of those key dates for this series because even if you did find um, a coin that is environmentally damaged, much like the coin that you see here, there are a couple dates that will be worth some money that you need to know about, okay? Uh, 1894 is a good one. Okay, if you found an 1894 with this kind of detail, you probably have a coin that's like 30, 40 bucks. Uh, 1912S, okay, 1912 is the only date in the Liberty Head Series nickel in which you will find a Denver and San Francisco mint mark. And usually that will sit right here under this dot just to the left of cents. So you will see either a D or S on a 1912. The 1912S coin in this condition is about 100 bucks. Um, low mintage, 238,000 pieces were produced. The 1894, 5.4 million. And then finally, uh, 1885 is a really good one. Uh, if you found an 1885 in this condition, that, that is the actual key date of the entire series. You have a coin that's worth probably in that five to six hundred dollar range with the, even with the environmental damage. 1886 is another good one, uh, and keep in mind the mintages for the 1885 is 1.472 million. The 1886 is 3.3 million. Okay, that's uh, kind of like a roundabout figure. Uh, it's a little bit higher or lower. Uh, in 1886, in this condition, we're going to be talking about a coin that's worth generally two to three hundred dollars. All right. Now, if they were clean, you know, uh, without the damage and all that stuff, okay, the, the prices change. All right, they go up. Um, people like problem-free examples, but that's what a Liberty Head nickel looks like. Now, here's another coin right here that I would say that a lot of us are enamored with, um, even in the lowest grades. And um, this one here on the left is a 1923. Buffalo nickel, the one on the right is a 1928 Buffalo nickel. Okay, and if you flip on the reverse, the 23 on the left is an S mint mark. Okay, you could tell even through all this extra rim wear right there, there's an S mint mark just under five cents. And then this one right here has an S mint mark for this 28. A couple tougher dated coins, okay, and um, uh, the one thing I will say about the 28 is you have a lamination issue right here. On Buffalo Nickels, okay, there was a lot of annealing problems with these coins throughout time. Okay, generally you would find a lot of coins with little like flakes popping off of the coin. That is what they call delamination or uh, simply just a um, uh, just impurities in the overall mix of the planchets for these coins. So these are extremely desirable okay for a number of reasons okay they're pure straight up americana okay you can't get any more american than the you know the the indian design and then the uh the, the buffalo on the reverse which by the way was modeled actual by an actual buffalo by the name of black diamond long long time ago uh the artist rendered the buffalo um at the zoo all right pretty cool uh, but yes, th these are extremely desirable coins in any condition. Now, the way that these coins were um, designed, okay, uh, things like the date and a lot of the other areas that matter, like this braid right here and this part of hair and then this top area right here of the feather, um, these wear down quite a bit 
frequently to where you can't even see the date. I mean, check out the 23. Um, coins of this grade, you're talking about a good, all right? Maybe even an AG, all right? Coins that exhibit no date at all are worth about a quarter, all right? Now, I'm showing you a couple of very interesting dates, okay? Because they're not, they're not common, they're not the rarest, but the 23S, for example, that you saw here in this grade, you're talking about a coin that's worth about five bucks, all right? Uh, good for is right around eight dollars so as you can see even a coin that's super war worn down like this has some value and there are always people that are looking to spend in um, a small amount of money for coins that they could put into an album all right that's important to some people so this would be a nice quick flip on ebay for about five bucks all right so this 28s here is in much better condition all right, and then usually the condition on these coins, anything higher than fine, is usually um, kind of, um, I guess, uh, refined by how defined this horn is on the buffalo on the reverse. As you can see, you have probably 20% of the horn existing on this coin. So this is probably more of a VG example. So with that being said, we have a 28S that's worth somewhere around two dollars again you never know that these coins are worth this kind of money if you don't know exactly what you're dealing with all right so we have that one now if you wanted to take a look at the most probably best condition example you could understand the actual overall overall design elements of the coin now what i didn't what i failed to mention was this is a this is a quite short series and went from 1913 to 1938 all right so it's only a 25 year span uh pretty crazy to believe because it was a very popular coin but as you guys know right after this we have jefferson nickel but take a look at the reverse of this coin and you could see a full horn action right here okay fully defined you could see a lot of this hair detail here it's got some nice luster. This is probably about a mint state 63 coin right here. Uh, it does have a carbon spot. Okay, that's what that looks like. Uh, but this is a really nice, pleasing kind of album album filler of a coin. This is what a mint state coin would look like for the Buffalo Nickel. Okay, I didn't have anything mint state with the Liberty head. I think the highest grade I had was like a VF30 uh, that I have in an album. So I didn't bother taking that out. But... Um, that, that is exactly what a brand new um, Buffalo Nickel would look like uh, if you did come across one. Okay, Keep in mind the luster because people like to clean these coins. Cleaning kills the value of a coin and the desirability. People want clean coins less than they do their original stuff. So keep in mind on how the luster uh, moves on the coin depending on how the lighting hits it, all right? So that's what a brand new one looks like. Um, let's talk about real quick of the key dates because there are a number of stoppers for the Buffalo Nickel series. Here's a common date, 36S. Um, so where do I start? We have quite a few of them. Uh, again, in this video, we're, there's no emphasis on some of the kind of like more advanced stuff like repunchment marks, double dies, errors, that sort of thing. Uh, we're keeping it kind of basic. Uh, the 13S uh, Type 2, okay, is a tough one. Uh, that's a coin that right out of the gates, you know, a few hundred dollars and up. Um, the 14D in good is around $75 to $80. Uh, we have a number of coins in the teens. So if you have some of those coins in the 1910s with D or S mint marks, a lot of them are... 10 20 30 40 dollars at the lowest grades and they go up from there all right a little bit of records check on the internet or possibly going through like a red book price guide will help give you a baseline on how much those coins are worth um 1921s is a true key date in the series coins of a lower grade start around 50 bucks and then they go up from there uh, mid state grades of course of all these coins are worth a huge premium keep that in mind 24s is another good one 26s but a lot of those coins pre 1928 are worth 
quite a bit of money, okay? Two, three, four, five, six dollars in the lowest grades. It's crazy. Um, but in any event, if you did come across this coin, you have a buffalo nickel, okay? Just be mindful of the date, condition, and everything like that, and you should go no wrong. All right, so let's see. What else can we talk about here? Some other oddball stuff that could pop up in change. Well, I think it's high time that we actually jumped into the Jefferson Nickel series. And um, let's see if I could find a coin that will work uh, for the... Uh, sure, why not? Let's go ahead and do this one. Let's just go ahead and start with the key date of the entire series, 1950. So there is a one year overlap between the Buffalo Nickel and the Jefferson Nickel in 1938. Uh, the U.S. Mint actually produced each design in 1938. Pretty cool. Uh, so in 1938 was the first year of the Jefferson Nickel. Okay, and it's going all the way up to the current. All right, 2020, you're going to see new nickels coming out here in a few months. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the actual kind of like dates in here that, that are noteworthy, that are worth a little bit of money. Um, from 1938 all the way up to 1964, okay? The U.S. Mint placed the mint mark on the reverse to the right at the base of Monticello. That's where you're going to find your mint mark. Um, generally, you can see this with the naked eye. Some people have a hard time with that based on the vision factor. But this one right here, this 1950D Jefferson Nickel is the key date of the entire series. Now, how much are we talking about here? Well, this is a coin that is otherwise a very pleasing example. However, um, a lot of these coins were preserved in high mint state grades, okay? So finding one, even in this condition, you're talking about a coin that's worth about $5, all right? So that is the high end of the spectrum when it comes to Jefferson Nickel key dates. All right, they're few and far between. Another one you want to keep in mind is the 38 uh, 38DNS. 39D is probably second in line for key date. That's another $5 coin in this condition. Okay, it's like a 1A, 1B. Less of those were preserved in high grades. All right, so that's the difference maker between 39D and 50D. Um, but yeah, 38D. 38S, 39D, of course, the second in line, 39S. So the D and S mint mark coins from the first couple years are definitely keepers. And they're worth about anywhere from $1 to $5. And kind of like, you know, general condition, as you see here, kind of in that, you know, VF condition. Um, you don't see a whole lot of nickels that grade like low ball. You, you'll find them on occasion. I have a few actually, but... A lot of the coins, they, there was a lot of production of Jefferson Nichols throughout the decades from the very beginning to right now, okay? So there's not a lot, there's less circulation of these coins than there was the Buffalo Nichols when they went through the Great Depression. And people were hoarding coins, people were spending money um, in all denominations. So, uh, so yeah, so those are the few kind of like key dates you're going to keep an eye out on. So that's that right there. Now, another thing to point out, and this is kind of like a favorite of why a lot of folks go through nickels, is going to be to find a few of these little gems right here. All right, so these are what is referred to as Silver, silver War Nickels. All right, so these were produced from 1942 to 1945, each date comprising of both P, D, and S minted coins. All right, and... Um, when they're worn down, they're gonna have kind of like a gunmetal appearance to them. Um, you get some that are a little bit higher grade, will appear silver, but the highest devices will be that gunmetal gray. That's kind of like the progression of circulation wear on these coins. Um, so we have a P and a couple S's right here as examples. In its lowest condition, much like this, like this P minted, uh, 43 is one of the more common dates. Uh, to, actually, it's the most common date out of the three uh, that I have here. 271 million were produced. As you guys know, the uh, the U.S. government was rationing out copper. 
uh, in the war efforts, and that's why they substituted silver. Okay, and that's a good thing for us because now we have a very collectible item that's worth a few bucks. Now, in their rawest form, like this, these coins are worth about a dollar thirty-five, I believe, with the price of silver being around eighteen dollars, like it is. So as the price of silver goes up, these go up as well. I remember in 2009 when silver ran up to over $50 an ounce, these things were like three, three fifty dollars a piece. It was pretty crazy. But these come out of nickel rolls pretty regularly, actually. If you went through a $100 box of nickels, you will more than likely find one or two of these. Okay, very rarely do you not find these. Uh, there's really no... I guess consummate key date uh, the series they're all worth about the same uh, 1944 s is the lowest minted war nickel out of the group at 21 million six hundred forty thousand pieces produced but that's a war nickel there for you uh, in its highest condition I actually have one in an album I'll show you here in a second uh, it's a nice pasty white coin it kind of looks like a silver Roosevelt dime or a silver quarter in a high grade it's pretty crazy so before we get there, let's go ahead and talk about a few other coins. All right, proof coins are not something that you typically come across in change, but people do uh, spend these, okay? They, they might have some that were in a collection that was passed down to them. They took it to a coin shop or maybe they searched online, found out that a lot of these coins aren't worth you know, selling on their own. Um, this one right here was found in change. You can actually see some scratch marks on there um pristine proof coins right out of a proof set are worth about 50 cents to a dollar this one is worth about 10 cents uh it's what they call an impaired proof all right a proof coin that has been scratched circulated to an, an extent uh but you know can be collected all on its own you know it can be put into an album as kind of like a neat oddity so that's what that is uh let's see well uh, we do have a number of, uh, like I showed you the, the Buffalo Ender on this of 2005. In 2004, the U.S. Um, Mint produced what they call Westward Journey Nickels. You had a Lewis and Clark. You, you had a few different types of designs in there um, on their own. They're not worth a whole lot of money, but if you found like BU rolls of them, I would definitely save it. They're worth about double face as it sits right now. Uh, you might come across a few of these things right here, okay? And these are simply Canadian nickels, okay? Pretty common for those of you that live up north close to the U.S.-Canadian border. More than likely, you're going to find some of these in your nickel rolls, all right? So there's a lot of common dates. If you did find one of these with a rabbit on the reverse, that is a 67th centennial. So that's the 100-year anniversary uh from when i guess canadian coins became a thing actually they were making canadian coins before them but they were province based so there was you know Newfoundland, Newfoundland coins and you know uh, new brunswick and everything like that um here's another low end 40s okay this one here has no mint mark to the right of the base of the monument there that's a philadelphia minted coin um it stays like that till you get into i believe the 80s okay when they actually placed an actual physical p mint mark on the actual coins um but aside from that <coughs> excuse me those are some of the oddities that you'll come across in nickel rolls sometimes you'll come across various other things you know people will throw a washer in there or maybe it's inadvertent uh, you know accidental uh, you might find, you know, a, like a, a blank disc uh, in there. Uh, some people would say, oh, yeah, this is a U.S. Mint blank. You know, you might find an actual genuine one. Um, generally, the rims will be upset on there. Uh, so on the, the blank planchets, uh, you'll see a rim on there because uh, they, they'll usually upset that before the strike. Um, generally, if you don't see that, and you just see a raw blank that it might be one of those punch outs that they use for the electrical boxes i've come across those quite frequently <laughs> they're a little annoying but you know that's what those are and then you can find other like foreign coins that kind of fit that similar diameter profile or the um you know just the overall like circumference of a regular uh, nickel 
and this is what a lot of people like to do. They like to get um, albums, and they will. Uh, let's go ahead and hike this up a little bit here. Buy albums, fill it up. Okay, this is a great way to kind of like begin roll hunting into collecting. Uh, you know, like a date set, and um, you know, this is one I've had a long time. This was actually my dad's, and I've done nothing with it. I haven't upgraded anything. Um, that's a higher graded war silver nickel right there, uh, probably an AU. Uh, but you begin to see the circulation. I think I have one that's mint state in here. I don't remember. Um, geez, that's about as close as it's gonna get. A 45s. Okay, so. It's, Compared to, you know, like this 47 that sits underneath it, it's a little bit more pastier white. And another thing to keep in mind, and this is okay to do this as long as you're on the appropriate surface, is that a silver war nickel will have a different kind of sound when you do a drop test. So here's a regular nickel that is 25% nickel, 75% copper, and then here's a 35% silver manganese planchet. So you get, yeah, you get, it almost sounds like a hybrid silver and penny, all right? You have that higher pitch ding, you know, and then that's how you know that you have something like it. Now, there's going to be other coins that will sound similar to it. Uh, you know, possibly they'll have some gunk on there that will um, change the actual sound of the coin. And, um, oh, another thing to keep in mind while I have you on here. Check out this date. 2009 is the uh, the modern key date for Jefferson Nichols. So anything post-2000, this is the one that people are buying rolls of at tremendous amounts of money. Okay, so the coin coming out of circulation like this one right here is worth about 50 cents to a dollar. Believe it or not, they actually have value. So as you go through your rolls, make sure you pull out every single Denver and Philadelphia minted 2009 as you come across them assemble full rolls turn around flip them you know flip a two dollar roll for 40 bucks and you are uh your gravy okay uh, that's gravy train with biscuit wheels it's it's like easy money so that's that one and that <coughs> pretty much sums it up man so sorry for choking over here i ate a bowl of granola it's yeah i went down the wrong pipe but that is, uh, that, that is more of a uh, kind of like a basic overview of Jefferson Nichols, some of the things that you would come across. Now, the only thing I didn't, didn't talk about, and I felt like maybe that um, it's probably worth mentioning, is that a shield nickel might pop up as well, okay? And this is what it's going to look like. Um, so he, here's some examples of shield nickels, okay, that... that actually is a shield nickel that's a shield nickel uh same composition as a regular nickel um these things were produced from i would have to say let me see here i will talk about it and probably be wrong about it uh from 1866 and then on the reverse they'll have uh, what they call with rays so they'll have an extra design where there's going to be like uh rays that's going around the uh, the big number five on the reverse and it goes all the way up to 1883. Now, there is a number of key dates in there um, for the business strike coins that are going to be huge stoppers in this series. But if you came across some of these coins, you do indeed have a shield nickel. Um, it, again, uh, do some research online. Uh, know which one's a key date and things like that. And you should go no wrong. Uh, but as you can see, they all have some sort of value. The, the low-end stuff... You know, are like five to ten dollar coins. Okay, so we have coins here with bids. Um, people just want it, want an example, and you know they don't want to spend over twenty bucks. You know, they, they'll they'll buy one that's like a VG, maybe a good. Um, a, a lot of the crucial design elements, like all these lines that go across the shield and all that, are generally worn down on the lower grades. But anyways, keep an eye out for coins that look like this. Um, that's the oldest form of regular nickel out there. Now there is a half dime um, that is still five cents, but that, those were comprised of silver and they were about as small as your fingernail. They were tiny. Um, but all in all, I say I pretty much covered all the bases. Uh, again, you know, a great resource. Uh, the Whitman 
United States Red Book price guide. I got them down for sale down here. Uh, new 2020 editions are available. Um, you know, if you're into varieties, that's something else that can be talked about. We got Strike It Rich with Pocket Change, which is still live and available for purchase. Those are in my links too and for Amazon. And then the Cherry Pickers Guide, like I had mentioned in a previous video, um, these are currently out of print. They're being retold and then they're going to be reproduced here this spring. Do not spend one to two hundred dollars for this book because they were going to be coming out. Uh, but if you wanted to take the next step, ladies and gentlemen, into your collecting and you want to look for rare dye varieties and errors and all that fun, exciting stuff where you can actually make some money, then this is the next step right here. So what do you guys think? Uh, if you're brand new to coin collecting, welcome. Uh, as always, I appreciate your guys' time. Uh, feel free to comment below. Let me know what you think about everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the blue gloves are coming off, man. And uh, again, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, uh, hit the bell for instant notifications if you enjoy my content. And as always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. Enjoy the hobby, keep collecting, and um, it's all fun collecting money. <laughs>